Hey everyone, it's Sirsha, and today we are going to talk about The Four Agreements. This is by Don Miguel Ruiz, it was published in 1997, and this is a self-help book that is talked about a lot. If you remember that book, The Secret, I feel like this is kind of similarly hyped up. And I was recommended this years ago, I kept putting it off and putting it off, and finally I thought, okay, I need a little bit of help and guidance in my life. Um, this says it's a Toltec wisdom book, and I had some issues with this, which we'll get into. On the whole, the main point of the Four Agreements, I think, is pretty solid and a good way to live your life, but there are things that I take issue with. But let's read the flap where it just lays out what the Four Agreements actually are. Be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity, say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Number two, don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Number three, don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. Number four, always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Okay. So, at the beginning, this first chapter, um, Domestication and the Dream of the Planet, I was like, I'm a little confused. This is kind of out there. This is a little bit like spiritual stuff that, um, that was kind of hard to grasp at first. Um, he's basically saying that like from the moment we're born, we are domesticated and, um, we're just raised to follow all of the things that our parents tell us to follow and, we have to find a way to break out of that because a lot of the patterns that our parents are repeating are just things that they've been they've had passed down from their parents and we'll get into this so let's read some quotes from this and try and understand what the heck is going on he says we soon develop a need to hook other people's attention in order to get the reward this is, um, he's saying when you go against rules, you get punished. When you do things right, you get a reward. The reward feels good, and we keep doing what others want us to do in order to get the reward. With that fear of being punished and that fear of not getting the reward, we start pretending to be what we are not, just to please others, just to be good enough for someone else. We try to please mom and dad. We try to please the teachers at school. We try to please the church, and so we start acting. We pretend to be what we are not because we are, are afraid of being rejected. The fear of being rejected becomes the fear of being of not being good enough. Eventually, we become someone that we are not. We become a copy of mama's beliefs, daddy's beliefs, society's beliefs, and religion's beliefs. Okay, straightforward enough. True. Um, this is something that I think about all the time in relation to nature versus nurture. How much of us is intrinsic when we are born? How much of our personality and our beliefs are just fed to us, and in a way, how much are we brainwashed by a lot of ideas? So that bit made sense to me. Um, how many times do we pay for one mistake? The answer is thousands of times. The human is the only animal on earth that pays a thousand times for the same mistake. The rest of the animals pay once for every mistake they make, but not us. We have a powerful memory. We make a mistake, we judge ourselves, we find ourselves guilty, and we punish ourselves. If justice exists, then that was enough. We don't need to do it again. But every time we remember, we judge ourselves again, we are guilty again, and we punish ourselves again and again and again. Um, one thing about this book is, like, he repeats the same thing a million times, and even though the book is very short, you know, it's under 150 pages, it could be even shorter, because he just keeps saying the same thing. Um, this, this bit about if we make a mistake, we judge ourselves and we find ourselves guilty and we keep doing that over and over and punishing ourselves. That is so true. 
But when he's talking about another person did something wrong, let's talk about the justice system. How do we know when someone is reformed and repentant, um, or both? Because a lot of the times in here, it seems like he's saying to just forgive, and that's it. And he doesn't go into details about, like, specific crimes, but, you know, what about murder? Do we just accept the apology from the murderer and then forgive them? It's, it's pretty unclear, and um, I'd like to know your thoughts, because I just felt like it was he was taking it a bit far, and um, we'll get into more of that in a second. Oh, this, yeah, this is one of the moments where he took it way too far and honestly pissed me off. He thinks, he says, every human is a magician and we can either put a spell on someone with our word or we can release someone from a spell. We cast spells all the time with our opinions. An example, I see a friend and give him an opinion that just popped into my mind. I say, hmm, I see that kind of color in your face in people who are going to get cancer. If he listens to the word... And if he agrees, he will have cancer in less than one year. That is the power of the word. Okay, that is ridiculous and should not have been put in print. It isn't true. A lot of things, a lot of things can happen based on the power of suggestion. Sure, of course. Medical things, diseases. I know there are people out there that will be like, you can think your way out of cancer. Please don't tell people that as if it is the one treatment that they should be seeking. Um, that is dangerous and it's irresponsible and it's reckless. So you're not gonna give somebody cancer by saying they look like they're gonna get cancer. Um, that was just like the most out there thing that he said in here. During our domestication, our parents and siblings gave their opinions about us without even thinking. We believed these opinions and we lived in fear over these opinions, like not being good at swimming or sports or writing. Someone gives an opinion and says, look, this girl is ugly. The girl listens, believes she is ugly, and grows up with the idea that she is ugly. It doesn't matter how beautiful she is. As long as she has that agreement, she will believe that she is ugly. That is the spell she is under. Okay, this one is a lot more realistic, makes a lot more sense, and I can personally attest to this. No matter what that stays forever as somebody who was bullied a lot in childhood um it it got in so early it was like the first opinion of myself um the first opinions were the opinions of other people who told me how you know ugly uncool and untalented i was and so even though i tried to fight against that my whole life it's always there and it is always the first thing that I think. So if people are staring at me, the first thing I think is, oh, I'm so ugly today. And they're really like, they've caught on to that and they can see it. Then the second thing is, no, 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 they're looking at me because I'm hot. Or they just want something to look at. But that first thing is always there and I don't know if it's ever gonna go away. Um, so that was very true. And it is. Um, very important to not take things like that to heart, but we're going to get into that later about what we should take to heart and what we shouldn't. What we sh I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Okay. We're still in the first agreement at this point. Be impeccable with your word. Uh, so this is about a mother who told her daughter that she wasn't good at singing because she was just tired of the noise. It says, after that, she no longer sang because she believed her voice was ugly and would bother anyone who heard it. She became shy at school, and if she was asked to sing, she refused. Even speaking to others became difficult for her. Everything changed in the little girl because of this new agreement. She believed she must repress her emotions in order to be accepted and loved. Okay, ouch. Um, that, that really shows the importance of not saying things, just like the first thing that comes into your head and throwing it out there into the world because it can affect somebody for the rest of their life. Which is funny that he says that because it kind of goes against what he says later. Um, which actually we'll get into in this quote right here. 
I don't have the need to have someone tell me, Miguel, you are doing so good, or how dare you do that. No, I don't take it personally. Whatever you think, whatever you feel, I know is your problem and not my problem. It is the way you see the world. It is nothing personal because you are dealing with yourself, not with me. Others are going to have their own opinion according to their belief system. So nothing they think about me is really about me, but it is about them. You may even tell me, Miguel, what you are saying is hurting me. But it is not what I am saying that is hurting you. It is that you have wounds that I touch by what I have said. You are hurting yourself. There is no way I can take that this personally. Not because I don't believe in you or don't trust you, but because I know that you see the world with different eyes, with your eyes. You create an entire picture or movie in your mind, and in that picture you are the director, you are the producer, you are the main actor or actress. Everyone else is a secondary character or actress. It is your movie. Um, actor or act actress. So... This is where he takes it way too far. Um, it's like he's saying we should just not care about hurting others. In the first paragraph, it makes sense and it's a good way to think that um, if somebody is mean to us, it's very helpful to think, okay, that doesn't reflect on me. Um, if somebody rejects us that doesn't reflect on us, it is usually something about them maybe that doesn't vibe with us or something about them that is something they're working through and they don't have the capacity to to be kind to us or to love us or whatever, to give us whatever we need. That's something they're dealing with in their world. But then in the second paragraph, <laughs> when someone tells you that you're hurting them, you don't get to decide that you're not hurting them. You don't get to decide that you're, that they're lying to you or that they're not hurt and you have nothing to do with it, like, if they are. It's, this upset me so much. <laughs> it is not what I'm saying that is hurting you. It is that you have wounds that I touch by what I have said. You are hurting yourself. That is such a, like, schoolyard bully thing to say. You are hurting yourself. I have nothing to do with this even though I'm being super mean to you right now. Like, so, like someone could just be cruel to somebody else and then go, I got nothing to do with it. You're hurting yourself. So irresponsible to put that in here. I don't agree with it. Um, we should absolutely be held accountable for our actions and our words and take responsibility for them. I think he just drops all the responsibility by saying, it is not my problem. It's all you. It's your worldview. Um, you're trapped in your own agreements. Yeah. Your point of view is something personal to you. It's no one's truth but yours. Then if you get mad at me, I know you are dealing with yourself. Sorry, but sometimes when we get mad at someone, it's because they've done something that warrants anger. Like, some people have said, like, don't, don't make me feel guilty. You have no right to make me feel guilty. I'm like, honey, if you're feeling guilty, maybe there's a reason. Maybe you did something that wasn't so good. We have to be able to look at ourselves and accept that sometimes we're in the wrong and be able to apologize. And then comes in the part that he talks about with being forgiven. I mean, if you are really, truly apologizing, sure. And you're saying you're not going to do whatever it is, again, forgiveness is acceptable. Um, and a very good thing so that both of you can move on. But he just takes it so far that I can't, I can't get down with it. Um, so we're still talking about the second agreement, don't take anything personally. The whole world can gossip about you, and if you don't take it personally, you are immune. Someone can intentionally send emotional poison, and if you don't take it personally, you will not eat it. When you don't take the emotional poison, it becomes even worse in the sender, but not in you. Okay, again. This is really great, like, when you're in the right and somebody is just coming for you for no reason. Um, it is good to, like... Be strong in yourself and remember, this is not about me. Um, they're trying to spit some poison for whatever reasons they have. But if you're the person that has done something bad and somebody is telling you how they feel, it's not poison. They're trying to resolve a conflict and tell you what happened, like how you hurt them. And to just stick your fingers in your ears and say blah, 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 I can't hear you, I can't hear you, I won't accept your emotional poison. You're never going to resolve that issue. So it's just not like as black and white as he's making it. 
Okay, now we're in the third agreement, don't make assumptions. We have the tendency to make assumptions about everything. The problem with making assumptions is that we believe they are the truth. We could swear they are real. We make assumptions about what others are doing or thinking. We take it personally, then we blame them, and react by sending emotional poison with, with our word. And that is why whenever we make assumptions, we're asking for problems. We make an assumption, we misunderstand, we take it personally, and we end up creating a whole big drama for nothing. Okay, this is interesting. Um, because yes, it's this is another great thing to live by, don't make assumptions. Just don't do it. Because it really doesn't end up helping anybody. And often we will assume somebody is mad at us, somebody hates us, and then a simple conversation with that person will totally explain what has been going on and it's not actually as bad as you thought. Sometimes. Sometimes it is as bad as you thought. But it's just so important to communicate and don't think he really gets to that in this book. It's much more like self-centered, just like in yourself, forget what everybody else is saying. I think it should be more about communication because we don't live in a void. We are not just like one person on an island. We live in a community. We live in a global community. We live in a world where we are interacting with people every day, most of us. And we have to be able to practice kindness, not just with ourselves, but with other people. That is so important to treat others with love and kindness, because how else are we going to make anything good in this world, including our relationship with ourselves, if we can't treat the people around us with kindness? Anyway. I don't even know where that came from. What was I talking about? Making assumptions? Just stop making assumptions. Um, because it really, it really does, I've noticed, it is a way of poisoning yourself because you think things are a certain way and you don't have any proof for it, but you're so convinced, like, this person thinks this about me and I know it. Um, it's useless. It doesn't get you anywhere, so don't do it. Often when you go into a relationship with someone you like, you have to justify why you like that person. You only see what you want to see and you deny there are things you don't like about that person. You lie to yourself just to make yourself right. Then you make assumptions and one of the assumptions is, my love will change this person, but this is not true. Your love will not change anybody. If others change, it's because they want to change, not because you can change them. Then something happens between the two of you and you get hurt. Suddenly you see what you didn't want to see before, only now it is amplified by your emotional poison. Now you have to justify your emotional pain and blame them for your choices. Okay, this one, yep, 100%, I agree with that. Isn't that what we do in relationships? We just see somebody and we're like, oh, I like them, I bet they're this, 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 and this. And um, then we find out they're not that, and as it turns out, our love, no matter how strong it is, cannot change them if they don't want to change. We're in the fourth agreement. Uh, always do your best. Action is about living fully. Inaction is the way that we deny life. Inaction is sitting in front of the television every day for years because you are afraid to be alive and to take the risk of expressing what you are. Expressing what you are is taking action. You can have many great ideas in your head, but what makes the difference is the action. Without action upon an idea, there will be no manifestation, no results, and no reward. Um, and I, I said this amazing quote to my friend the other day. And I bet somebody said this, but like, let's pretend I invented it and I want to trademark it. Um, I was like, we were talking about like, how much of life is chance and luck and how, how much can we really control and like, we should really participate as much as we can. Um, and I said, Jesus may take the wheel, but we got to work the pedals. Has somebody said that before? I felt so smart. Jesus take the wheel, but I'm going to work the pedals. Like... I will step on that gas if we got to go somewhere. Um, yeah. So manifest your dreams. Don't let your dreams just be dreams. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Just do it. Uh, but also give yourself grace and let yourself rest. Okay. <laughs> when you honor these four agreements together, there is no way that you will live in hell. There is no way. If you are impeccable with your word, if you don't take anything personally, if you don't make assumptions, if you always do your best, then you are going to have a beautiful life. You are going to control your life 100%. Well, I got news for you. You can do all of those things and bad luck can still happen to you. Tragedy can still happen to you. But it's nice in the meantime, if that doesn't happen, um, to live this way. 
to live by these four agreements. It is better. Uh, but it's just, I just don't like his statements where he's guaranteeing you're going to control your life 100%. I guess it's this kind of philosophy of um, the law of attraction. Like, if I believe only good things will happen, then only good things will happen. It, it is true to an extent because your mindset is different, so you just automatically see, like, the good in life. I've been noticing this about myself lately. If I'm just in a better mood, then I'm seeing better things around me. But you do not have control in the way that he's saying. You can't control major world events. You can't control natural disasters. You can't, you, you can't control the health of your loved ones. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. This one really, mm, this one drove me wild. Okay, this chain of training from human to human, from generation to generation, is perfectly normal in human society. You don't need to blame your parents for teaching you to be like them. What else could they teach you but what they know? They did the best they could, and if they abused you, it was due to their own domestication, their own fears, their own beliefs. They had no control over the programming they received, so they couldn't have behaved any differently. Wrong. That is letting abusers off the hook. It is not okay to spread statements like that. Yes, it is difficult when you are raised in a traumatic environment. I know. But you have a choice. It does alter your brain chemistry. It makes things harder for you. But you always have a choice to choose to be good or to choose to hurt people not blaming your abusive parents like if that's good for your inner peace fine but saying that they couldn't have acted any differently is not true every abuser could have acted differently i don't want someone to read that and like blame themselves or think that it was kind of okay what happened it was never okay if you were abused it was never okay it does not matter what happened to the abuser in their childhood or in their life to make them that way, you don't just turn into an abuser because you were abused. You can always choose to be better. So, sure, it might be harder because you've been shown, like, this is the way to act, like, we hurt each other. It's never an excuse. That statement was not okay with me. Moving on. I didn't know I was so fired up about this. The angel of death can teach us to live every day as if it is the last day of our lives, as if there may be no tomorrow. We can begin each day by saying, I am awake, I see the sun, I am going to give my gratitude to the sun and to everything and everyone because I am still alive. One more day to be myself. I just thought that was really nice. Um, I asked someone how they were, an older man, how they were one time and he said something like, I'm doing great, I woke up on this side of the grass today. And I just loved that. Because as difficult as my journey has been with depression um, and often not seeing a point to continue, when I can get into a better mindset of seeing the beautiful things about life, I am able to go, okay, I have a very limited time here on this planet, in this life, in this body, and I might as well go ahead and appreciate every little thing that is beautiful about it. And there is a lot. And it's hard to see when you're really depressed, but there is a lot. For every moment that is past, the angel of death keeps taking the part that is dead and we keep living in the present. The parasite wants us to carry the past with us and that makes it so heavy to be alive. When we try to live in the past, how can we enjoy the present? When we dream of the future, why must we carry the burden of the past? When are we going to live in the present? That is what the angel of death teaches us to do. So I like that idea um, about death maybe not being such a bad thing because it's teaching us how to live in the present because we don't have that much time. And it kind of made me think of that episode of The Good Place, you have to watch this show, where Chidi says to his students that the philosophy you should really follow is nihilism. Like, nothing matters, you're just gonna die, so do whatever. Um, you don't have to take it that far, but, like, it doesn't have to be a fatalistic thing. I often use the idea of death to think, like, there's no point, so who cares? Like, embarrass yourself, text your crush, be ridiculous. Um, and you can do that in a healthy way. There is an interesting bit here at the end 
where he says, this is what humans have been seeking for centuries. For thousands of years, we have been searching for happiness. Happiness is the lost paradise. Humans have worked so hard to reach this point, and this is the part of the evolution of the mind. This is the future of humanity. So if we think about evolution in terms of um, Neanderthals and even before that, like how we developed into the human beings that we are today, there is still the evolution of the mind that's going. Like maybe we got rid of our vestigial tail or whatever, but we're still working on our brains. And I think this speaks to how we maybe got too smart too fast. And, you know, there were a lot of years where we were doing like this hunter gatherer thing. We were slowly advancing humanity but then so much happened in the 20th century. It was like invention, invention, invention. And then this explosion with social media and being able to access the news in our hand 24 seven and learn whatever we want, but also get so much misinformation. It just all happened really, really fast. And I think maybe our brains are not equipped for that yet. And it's an interesting point that the future of humanity is perhaps this evolved brain where we are happier because we are not so incredibly stressed by the overwhelming amount of information that is being thrown at us every day now because of the internet. I really like this idea, like maybe if we figure things out and we stop killing the planet and killing each other and humanity does survive, maybe if it does, we'll be happier people in the future. Because I often think about, you know, I like to overanalyze um, my depression and anxiety and a lot of it comes from just knowing too much and thinking too much and maybe there will be a day where that evens out or where it doesn't bother us or like where maybe one day it'll be like you know in dune where there's this whole revolution where they get rid of technology um maybe we'll do that and then we'll just go back to living in the woods and growing our own food and and maybe we won't hate each other so much um it's an interesting idea so after i read this um i talked with my therapist about it and this idea that we're supposed to say that anything says anything that other people say to us is meaningless, um, that we shouldn't take it to heart, we shouldn't believe it. I asked her, why are we supposed to listen and accept when people say nice things, but we're supposed to push it away when their opinions are not nice? And I said that seems like cherry picking, like people who cherry pick the Bible for the parts that they like. I mean, I'll take this and not that. Um, and she said, we should be able to kind of filter things and not take the bad things to heart if it's, um, if it's unwarranted and it's just hurtful to be hurtful. But if there's a criticism that we might need to hear, that's okay to listen to that. And then on the flip side, we shouldn't need praise, but we can accept it. If that is useful to us, we can accept it. And I was just like, this is too much. You know, I wish it was easier, you know, block out the bad stuff, take the good stuff. But then that does result in us ignoring things that we maybe really need to hear. Um, and, and sometimes taking in too much praise and just becoming full of ourselves in a way that isn't helpful to anybody. So there's a lot of lessons there and you can, Take this and do what you want with it. Uh, let me know your philosophy about life. Like, do you take everything to heart? Um, or are you able to filter through what is what you need to hear? Because it's not just like what's useful to you or what will make you feel better. We need to hear hard truths a lot of the time, unfortunately. That's life. And yeah, so it seems it seems wrong to me to say that person is just living in their own world and nothing they say should have any impact on me. 
sometimes it does and sometimes things that people say are true a lot of the times they are just trying to be hurtful though so really how do you decide and I guess that's where the difficult part comes in because you have to be able to discern um, when somebody is just being a bully and when maybe you are you are being blind to something that you do need to see about yourself there's a lot in here and I obviously had I took issue with a lot of it um, but overall the four agreements I can definitely see life improving if we all lived that way not to the extent that he takes it but you know being impeccable with your word not taking things personally not making any assumptions and always doing your best that sounds great let's try to let's just try to do that um so what did you think about this book is it worth the hype i would love to know your opinion um and let's be kind okay let's be kind in the comments because speaking of like not taking things personally my god the things that people say when they're behind a computer screen on youtube looking at some stranger talking oh the vile things that come out of their fingertips let's not do that and i will see you all next time it might be a little while because i'm going to california for my birthday so wish me luck and i will see you probably when i get back happy reading